Uh, now, Thank Boris you. Johnson succumbed to the inevitable on this day just two weeks before he would have completed three years in office. So let's take a look at the Prime Minister's remarkable but deeply controversial political journey. Um, Prime Minister, how's, how's your week going? Terrific, like many others. It was a challenging week, to say the least, for the British Prime Minister. What started as claims of lying against Number 10 concluded with an end to Johnson's premiership. Boris Johnson joined the Conservative Party as a candidate in 1997. He lost his first political bid to the opposition Labour Party, but stood for the Parliament again in 2001. This time, winning the bid in the Henley-on-Thames constituency. In the next six years, Johnson regularly appeared on the telly, made some controversial comments, had to apologize for a few as well, but led on with his political journey. Johnson was elected the mayor of London in 2007, winning a tight race against the Labour Party led by Gordon Brown. He later served as the Foreign Secretary under Theresa May. I have to say that the Foreign Secretary is doing an absolutely excellent job. He, he is in short an FFS, a fine Foreign Secretary. Johnson's tenure as the Foreign Secretary also came with controversies. He found himself in a spot often, given the blunt statements made. I use phrases and language that have caused offence. Of course, I'm sorry for the offence that I have caused, but I will continue to speak as directly as I can. In 2019, Boris Johnson was elected leader of the Conservative Party. Jeremy Hunt, 46,656. Boris Johnson, 92,153. And therefore, I give notice that Boris Johnson is elected as the leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. And appointed the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom the next day. I have just been to see Her Majesty the Queen, who has invited me to form a government, and I have accepted. The first thing Johnson did on assuming charge was reopening of the Brexit negotiations a poll promise that he made. And yes, they will have an overwhelming mandate from this election to get Brexit done, and we will honour that mandate by January the 31st. Amid several deadlocks, stalled conversations, protests and opposition, the UK left the EU on the 31st of January 2020. The Tories made promises of an independent British economy, but as fate would have it, the tall claims were dampened by the COVID-19 pandemic. The time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. While the government's quick rollout of COVID-19 vaccine buoyed the Johnson administration, his lockdown party sank the public's trust in number 10. Johnson has faced months of damaging revelations of parties held at his office in defiance of the COVID-19 lockdowns. The leaked images and videos started propping up in the media at the beginning of this year. There was a brief gathering in the cabinet room shortly after 2 p.m., lasting for less than 10 minutes, during which people I work with kindly passed on uh, their good wishes. And I have to say, in all frankness, at that time, it did not occur to me uh, that this might have been a breach of the rules. Johnson had his justifications, but they could not build back the trust of the public. Partygate was just the start of a series of scandals that would follow. Two Tory MPs were forced to quit from their seats following sexual misconduct claims. The party failed to save the seat in a bipole held last month. The final nail in the coffin was the Pincher scandal. The former Tory whip stepped down following claims of sexual misconduct, 
Chris Pincher had a history of such inappropriate behavior, which was conveniently ignored by Johnson while electing Pincher as the party whip. The Tory government fell like a pack of cards. Those who have resigned say that the government has lost integrity, that there needs to be some accountability, and that Johnson cannot let his personal political ambitions override his duty as the Prime Minister. Now, with history as witness, Johnson has a tainted political legacy and no office to hold on to. Bureau Report, we on World is One. There is no word from the Biden administration here in Washington yet about Boris Johnson's decision to go, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has paid tribute to the Prime Minister's leadership, while the Russian government is celebrating his decision to stand down. Here in the U.S., former President Donald Trump once described Boris Johnson as Britain Trump. And some observers here will believe that on this day in the U.K., the constitutional guardrails that failed largely to protect American democracy uh, from Donald Trump's conspiracy theory believing supporters on January the 6th of last year when they ransacked Capitol Hill have in fact proved more resilient on the other side of the Atlantic. But much depends on who comes next, how quickly they arrive in Downing Street, and whether Boris Johnson's departure presages a new era of stability for his party and for his country. That's we on live broadcast from Washington, D.C. on this extraordinary day on the other side of the Atlantic.